Hello everyone. This is the third video in anthropology series and uh, in this particular video we are going to discuss the syllabus of paper 2 of anthropology for UPSC mains exam. So let's start. So the paper 2 starts with the evolution of Indian culture and civilization, prehistoric, paleolithic, mesolithic, neolithic, neolithic and chalcolithic. All these phases, uh, basically uh, the questions will come from these particular phases like uh, what are the major findings in different parts of the India, what are the tool traditions, what are the different fossils find, found in uh, different different parts of the country and uh, who are the main excavators and who are the main anthropologists who have discovered these, what is the definition of these particular uh, terms. So this you will read in 1.1. Then in uh, then proto-historic Indus civilization, then pre-Harappan, Harappan, post-Harappan culture. So here uh, fixed notes are there in brain tree. Uh, contribution of tribal culture to Indian civilization. So how the tribal cultures have influenced the uh, mainstream culture and uh, mainstream culture have influenced the tribal culture. This you will study here. Then 1.2 paleo anthropological evidences from India with a special reference to Shivalik and Narbala Basin, Ramavitra, Shiva Pitkats and Narmada man. So uh, these particular uh, terms Rama Pitkas and Shiva Pitkas, they are the ancient apes which were found in the Shivalik hills. So they have definite properties, they have definite uh, skull structure, what is the cranium capacity of that and uh, what are the different bones that have been found and what is their chronological order, what is their phylo phylogenetic status and uh, who are the uh, modern apes to which they are related and all those things. So this we will study here and in Narmada man this is one of the uh, means it was found by which person and what is his uh, findings, what theory he gave regarding Narmada man. Narmada man was found in Narmada basin and uh, how Narmada man is different from different other findings like uh, uh, Neanderthal or uh, ja Homo erectus javanica speaking man and all those things. So that you will study here. So here uh, the definitions are fixed for Narmada man and uh, its context is also fixed so you have to just mug it up then uh, 1.3 ethnoarchaeology in India so basically ethnoarchaeology means ethno means uh, ethnography means uh, means uh, studying some particular culture and uh, writing about that and when it uh, combines with archaeology so basically means uh, by using the archaeological methods you are going to write the history of some ancient cultures or means their whole cultural life or their whole uh, pattern of life if you are going to write by using archaeology that becomes ethnoarchaeology. So what are the different ethnoarchaeological finds in India, the concept of ethnoarchaeology, survivals and parallels among hunting, foraging, fishing, pastoral and peasant communities including arts and crafts producing communities. So survivals are those uh, particular cultural items which do not have significance right now, which do not have any particular functional use but they were uh, means they are still present and they were used in the past. And parallels means uh, what are the different things which uh, are uh, means same in different different societies. Uh, their uh, mode of uh, evolution could be different. How they were they came into existence could be different. However, uh, they are found among different communities like uh, rafting or something like that. So this will uh, be covered in 1.3. Then coming on the next uh, topic, demographic profile of India. So here. Uh, there are uh, means uh, almost uh, same question is asked every year uh, that is uh, what is the ethnic classification of the Indian uh, tribes or the Indian people and what is the linguistic classification of the Indian population. So this ethnic classification uh, uh, was uh, and the linguistic classification means it is fixed means uh, ethnic classification is given by Risley and Guha and linguistic classification by Gradson. So you just have to make it up, uh, you just have to make up the chart and what are the different characteristics of different different ethnic groups and uh, uh, in which parts of India they are found and some examples and all those things. So not very very complicated. Uh, this will be covered in just uh, maybe 2-3 hours and uh, their, their distribution. The Indian population factors influencing its growth and expectation. Here you will study why Indian population is increasing at fast rate, what are its channels, how to reduce the population, what are different factors which influence the population growth like health, food availability, nutrition, um, then uh, availability of contraceptives and all those things and uh, what is the population growth rate and all so this we will study here then coming to the next chapter chapter 3 so this is basically the cultural part of our uh, paper 2 
here uh, the structure in each of the traditional indian social system like varna ashram system was there purushartha karma rina and rebirth so all these are the fixed concepts like in varna ashram system uh, there will be different ashrams of your uh, which you have to pass throughout your life like uh, uh, grihastra vanaprastha sanyas and before that brahmacharya then purushartha means uh, whatever uh, is the your duties and responsibilities that you have to Uh, go throughout your life so different uh, ashrams have different purusharthas uh, and this has been assigned in the ancient scriptures of the indian uh, hindu scriptures then what is the concept of karma who has given the karma concept and what it signifies then rina and rebirth rina there are different different types of rina like pitr rina then uh, your uh, atiti rin and all those things so what is their significance how many types of rinas are there and what is the concept of rebirth how it is related to karma this will study in 3.1 then 3.2 caste system in india is structure and characteristics uh, here you have to give some thinker and uh, their uh, how they have defined the caste system and not just some thinkers there are different different theories you have to just uh, know all different theories some is like brahmana theory some is mana theory and all those things then uh, varna and caste what is uh, what is the difference between varna system and what is the difference between caste system how caste system is different from varna system on the ground that you will study then theories of origin origin of caste system then dominant caste this was uh, what is the concept of dominant caste who gave this particular concept dominant caste means those castes uh, which are uh, means more powerful in a particular community or in a particular geographical area and uh, there are different different uh, criteria for being dominant like if you should be numerically superior you should have uh, more uh, uh, properties land and all you should have political power more education and all so who gave this particular concept what are the different criteria that you have to study here then caste mobility how different different castes uh, have changed their hierarchical position what is the fix means are the caste is caste system fixed or is varna system fixed and what is the book view and field view this will study here then future of caste system how the caste system is changing right now jismani system tribe caste continuum this particular co concept was uh, given by a particular thinker so you have to write his name and what is this uh, theory as well as you have to give some examples similarly in jismani system this was also given in indian scriptures and uh, uh, how this system has evolved uh, means what are the different roles of different castes and how they help each other in the perpetuating the village life and uh, this was basically done in village studies so that you will study here then uh, coming on chapter 3.3 sacred complex nature man spirit complex so this was also given by uh, thinkers like uh, lp vidyarthi gave nature man spirit complex so according to it like uh, the man uh, the people who are living in the forest they are dependent on nature as well as uh, the nature uh, and their their religious feelings are also dependent on the nature and uh, Uh, the spirits or the religion and how the all three are interrelated and this has been shown in this particular thing like nature is related interrelated to man because uh, man conserves nature by forming their sacred groups and they will also uh, have religious feelings towards the animals for flora fauna so they will respect that particular surrounding so ecosystem is maintained and uh, similarly the ecosystem gives them li uh, livelihood gives them food uh, and so many things similarly there for their mental peace the spirits are there like uh, uh, here one uh, example is of uh, gosains uh, malevolent and benevolent malevolent and benevolent gosains of um, uh, the malay tribe so that you will study later then similarly sacred complex uh, what is the sacred complex concept uh, who has given it and uh, from where it can be applied then coming on uh, 3.4 impact of buddhism jainism islam and christianity on indian societies so what are the different aspects of these particular uh, religions and how they have impacted indian society that we'll study here this is a fixed uh, theoretical concept like uh, islam gave uh, um, equ equality towards means sons uh, or uh, buddhism and jainism they pro propagated non violence christianity has given some other aspects so that uh, you have to just make five five point for each and every religion and that's it coming on the fourth chapter this is the most important chapter and uh, here uh, you will learn about the emergence and growth of anthropology in india contributions of 18th 19th and early 20th century scholar administrators 
so these scholar administrators were those people who came to india to rule because india was a colonial state under british government so these administrators came to rule india however they had to study the native indian population uh, for two purposes first for better administration to understand if they will have better understanding of the indian people so they will be able to administer them better and uh, second purpose was that they were themselves interested in studying the native tribal population and the uh, other populations which were isolated so these two uh, things led to scholar administrators similarly uh, what is the emergence and what is the growth of anthropology what are the different stages through which the, which the anthropology has passed and uh, what are different uh, thinkers and what is their theories and um, what are the different uh, tribes that they have studied what are the, their contributions so you'll study all the thinkers like sc roy hyman dar warrior elvin then uh, majumdar vidyarthi bose so all this will be covered here so, uh, contribution of indian anthropologists to to the tribal and caste studies so this also you'll uh, read like caste studies uh, were done by m and shrinivas so uh, or uh, anand krishna swami ayer so we are all this actually this chapter is very very important because it covers m- almost uh, whole paper too if you study it here so uh, the examples f- from here can be put forward in all other topics also then uh, coming the fifth chapter uh, this chapter uh, talks about indian village so significance of village study in india when the village study started uh, who are the pioneers of the village study before that the tribal studies were done so after that the village study started and uh, what how the indian village system works as a social system what are the different interlinkages and relationship between different different caste groups or tri uh, people and uh, then traditional changing patterns of settlement and inter caste relations agrarian relations in indian villages impact of globalization on indian villages so all the relationship between different parts of the indian village you will study here then uh, 5.2 linguistic and religious minorities and their social political and economic status so uh, religious minorities are uh, means uh, it uh, means if you see uh, the religious minorities are all other uh, religions except hinduism and linguistic minorities are the different people living in different parts of our country which have their own script and language and that is in minority uh, with respect to the larger population so what is their social political and economic status generally their social political and economic status is lower and they don't have that much opportunities as well as power so what are the different examples uh, that you can give here that you'll study in this particular thing then 5.3 indige- indigenous and exogenous process of socio cultural change in, in the society and uh, here uh, they want to ask you about sanskritization westernization modernization so all the these three concepts were given by mn shrinivas so what is the difference between westernization and modernization you will study this here and uh, what is sanskritization how it works what are the different uh, castes or the people who have uh, used sanskritization to improve their uh, social status and all then interplay of little and great tradition so what is little tradition what is great tradition what is the difference between these two and uh, say for example the great tradition are those traditions which uh, evolve from the great learning centers which evolve from cities universities urban areas and which have great impact like they have been mentioned in you know, big big scriptures like gita little tradition means the local traditions which are followed in the different li- different localities of different communities they or uh, either derivation of the great tradition means either they have been derived from there or else uh, there were some local practices which have evolved into little tradition and there is always a interplay between in, uh, little and great means they just keep on exchanging different ideas among each other so there are concept of parachelization and universalization that you will study here that uh, parachelization means when the great tradition becomes little and uh, universalization when some little tradition becomes great tradition then panchayat raj and social change media and social change all these are uh, normal topics so coming on the sixth chapter from here the tribal uh, uh, the study for tribal society starts uh, and what are the different problems and challenges of the tribal society and uh, this is a very very scoring part a lot of questions have been asked from this particular chapter almost uh, 150 to 200 marks are asked from the tribal india and uh, the best part is that uh, it's very very easy thing and uh, the worst part is that people generally avoid this thing they do not study the tribal uh, uh, the from chapter 6 to uh, chapter 9 generally people ignore and that is why they get low marks in paper 
However, this is the easiest part if you do it very well, so you can score much better marks. So the tribal situation in India, biogenetic variability, similarly that racial concept we have that racial characteristics, so similarly how the tribals, uh, different tribes of India are divided biogenetically. The linguistic and socio-economic characteristic of tribal population and their distribution, linguistic classification of the tribal and socio-economic, generally they are very poor, so uh, what are the different uh, reasons why they are economically poor and all. Then problems of the tribal communities, land alienation, poverty, indebtedness, low literacy, poor educational facilities, unemployment, underemployment, health and nutrition. So uh, in each and every topic you have to learn about what are the different problems and challenges. Say for example, let's say in health and nutrition. So in nutrition they do not get enough protein, uh, fat, uh, vitamin A, riboflavin, uh, thymine all those things are there so it has been uh, means all these things have been given in zaza committee report so you can study there that is the best document to study about the tribal situation so you should uh, get a printout of zaza committee report and just study it from the first end to the last end so uh, say for example uh, there is less availability of doctors in the tribal areas since the tribal areas are very far flung and they live in very remote areas so uh, availability of outside doctors is not possible so that is why Zaza committee has told that uh, there should be internal doctors and uh, there should be dif uh, different training mechanisms for the people who can work in that particular area like indigenous people uh, they should be trained the uh, training should be in local languages so that they can uh, easily talk to the people so similarly you have to uh, learn about why there is so much indebtedness why land alienation is increasing what are the different uh, schemes of the government and how they have failed so this all you will study here then 6.3 development projects and their impact on tribal displacement and problems of rehabilitation so you know that a lot of uh, means tribal uh, lands are rich in forest minerals and uh, they are also underdeveloped so a lot of uh, mining project industrial projects are being opened up in this particular area so that is leading to a lot of encroachment of the tribal land so how the tribal displacement occurs what are the different rules uh, uh, which uh, ask for the compens compensation to be given to the tribal people and how they have not been followed. The development of forest policy and tribals, how the forest policy of India improved means uh, during the British time first they uh, said that we need uh, to exploit forest for uh, making the railways. Then after that uh, they nationalized all the forest and uh, they said that all the forest belong to the government and after that they started evicting or uh, removing the people who are living in the forest so there are different different policies like forest policy of 1927 forest policy of 18 uh, 1882 before that 1856 so all that you have to chronological order uh, what are the di different uh, aspects and how the forest policy has been changing uh, throughout the time uh, that you have to study here impact of urbanization and industrialization on the tribal population uh, again same uh, there is means very fixed uh, answer for this also uh, let's say for industrialization that is leading to a lot of uh, land loss and uh, a lot of pollution in the tribal areas and uh, industrialization is leading to modernization also our urbanization and industrialization are also related then coming on the next topic uh, topic 7 so topic 7 is problems of exploitation and deprivation of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and other backward classes, constitutional safeguards for the scheduled tribe and scheduled caste. So this is a very fixed topic and you have to write about all the articles that have been given in the constitution say for example article uh, 338, uh, 333, 342, uh, then schedule 5, schedule 6, uh, article uh, 19, 18, 17 and all those things. So this uh, article 46, 45. So what are the different contents of those particular articles, How what are the different uh, protection and safeguards that have been provided to these particular classes or uh, castes and uh, what are the different challenges in implementation of that, How uh, why they have not been implemented, that you have to study here. Then social change and contemporary tribal societies, impact of modern democratic institution like uh, you know that PESA, PESA Act has been uh, formulated panchayat extension to schedule area so how that is impacting the traditional society of the tribal people how their traditional chiefs uh, and uh, the elected chiefs how what differences they have then what are the different developmental programs and welfare measures of tribal and weaker section and uh, what is their impact how much they have worked 
then uh, the concept of ethnicity ethnic conflicts and political development you, you know that a lot of conflicts keep on happening so here you have to give a lot of case studies like right now uh, the ethnic conflict between maiti and uh, naga people are uh, is happening in nagaland so that you have to study what is the concept of ethnicity how different ethnic groups are different differentiated among each other then unrest among tribal communities regionalism and demand for autonomy so what are the different areas in which uh, autonomy is being demanded right now naxal movement is there then uh, secessionist movements are happening in northeastern uh, parts of the india then pseudo tribalism is there pseudo tribalism means the people who want to show that they are the tribal because of uh, a lot of benefits are available to the tribal people like different subsidies are available reservation in government jobs and educational institutions are given to the tribal people and if they are living in remote areas so they will be provided free of cost sugar uh, food materials and all those things so uh, that is why many communities which are living in the tribal areas they right now are trying to claim the tribal status so that is called pseudo tribalism then social change among the tribes during the colonial and post independent india and how that has influenced uh, means what is the interaction between the caste communities uh, agricultural communities urban communities and uh, how the social changes are occurring and there are different social movements like tana bhagat movement or uh, birsa munda movement so the, all that you have to study here then coming on the chapter 8 impact of hinduism buddhism christianity islam and other religions on the tribal societies so earlier also in chapter 3.4 we have studied the impact of these particular uh, religions on indian society now we will study only particularly what what was their impact on the tribal society so basically uh, uh, if you will see that a lot of uh, hindu mode of tribalization um, hindu mode of tribalization or tribal mode mode of hinduism something like that has been given by nk bose so that will study in the impact of hinduism in the impact of christianity we will see that a lot of tribes have been converting to christian religion and uh, right now uh, we have a lot of christian population in tribal areas so what is the impact of missionaries how they have impacted tribal areas what is the impact of islam uh, what is the how uh, what is the population of islam islamic tribal communities in india you have to give the case of lakshadweep and all the tribe and nation state a comparative study of tribal communities in india and other countries so here again you have to uh, show that uh, you have to basically give the international examples here that uh, how the tribal situation is there in international arena then uh, this is the last chapter in uh, paper 2 uh, history of administration of tribal areas tribal policies plans programs of tribal development and their implementation so say for example there is a tribal sub plan so according to tribal sub plan the, there should be equitable budget allocation for the tri for the tribal people is specifically in the budget say for example if tribal population right now in india according to 2011 census is to uh, 8.6% so similarly uh, whatever is the general bu budget out of that 8.6% should be allocated to the tribal uh, or schedule schedule tribe population uh, plan so it is called tribal sub plan so different tribal policies have came uh, like pesa is there fra is there and uh, forest joint management program was there programs of tribal development and their implementation what are the lacunas what are the challenges how you are going to improve that the concept of ptg primitive tribal groups which are also known as right now as particularly vul vulnerable tribal groups pvgt so these people uh, have some five characteristic like low population they are educationally backward they use primitive technology they are isolated and they are economic they are economically very weak so uh, means the five criteria that you have to learn and you have to learn what are the different uh, uh, very very uh, backward tribal communities what is their distribution a special program for their development you have to give here case studies of different states like what has been done for pvgt in uh, andhra pradesh or kerala or odisha then role of ngos in the tribal development how the ngos can reach to those particular areas where, where the government is not able to reach and then role of anthropology in tribal and rural development so here you have to give both cultural aspect as well as the biological aspect that how the anthropology can help them in dealing with different diseases and, and the cultural aspect like uh, how the anthropology can uh, make sure that the developmental projects are done according to the, the demands of the society and the challenges and needs of the society and they are not ex imposed from external world 
then uh, 9.3 contribution of anthropology to the understanding of regionalism communalism and ethnic and political movements so all these things are happening in tribal india also so basically you have to just uh, study the case studies here so uh, basically uh, the ch from chapter 6 to chapter 9 it's all about doing the previous year question and answers so that is the best way to complete the anthropology uh, and uh, that is the best way to complete anthropology in each and every sense so uh, you have to solve the previous year question paper that is the only way to uh, study anthropology paper 2 uh, otherwise uh, this, these are the general topics and uh, you just cannot write the general answer so that is why you have to make the answers for the previous year questions so that's it for this particular video thank you and uh, in the next part, the next video we are going to start from paper 1 and we are right now, uh, after that we will take every topic in uh, detail and uh, we are going to uh, means ex uh, means i will explain all uh, all the topics in detail whichever i will take in uh, from the next video we will start from paper one and after that i will uh, tell you uh, we will discuss uh, the previous year questions and then you will be asked to write the answers of those particular questions after reading or after l listening the video so that will be really productive and that will be the actual work which will do in order which will help you in your examination preparation Okay, thank you.